Hello friends, in the previous session we discussed about the shortest job first, non-preemptive version. In this particular video session, we are going to start with its preemptive versions uh, working. So, let's start with its working. We have the same example mentioned over here so that we can finally compare the differences in various measures that we computed in the last video. In case you didn't view it, please view it once again, uh, once by moving on to the previous uh, videos in the same playlist and we have the preemptive SJF version over here. So first of all, what does a preemptive SJF means? The preemptive means that if I feel that there is some benefit in stopping a particular process for some small time interval of time and giving the CPU to some other process and then restarting this process later, then if I feel that there is some benefit, then I would then I would make the decision of doing th doing that. And how do I decide that there is some benefit? Over here we decide by seeing that if there arrives a job with a shorter burst time, with a smaller burst time, with a smaller execution time, then we would stop the current executing task and give the CPU to the smaller burst time job that has just arrived and once it completes then we would continue the working of continue the working of this particular job that we stopped so that is the decision that we take that is the criteria over which we decide to stop a particular process or not and this is what we uh, mean from preemptive shortest job first it is also referred to as shortest remaining time first in, in many questions and in many textbooks so please uh, note down that shortest remaining time first is a synonym to preemptive sgf and now let's start with the working of this so in the example that we have we have three processes over here with three ar different arrival times as we can see that p1 is the only process which arrives at time instant zero and then the other processes arrive p2 and p3 with different burst times are also listed over here so we start with which process we obviously start with p1 because it is the only available process with us at time instant zero so we start with its execution till no other process arrives we just continue its execution since we know that p2 only arrives at time instant one so at time instant one we would check we would check whether we should preempt this process or not so at time instant one what we consider is we check that p2 has a smaller burst time right p2 has a smaller burst time why because p1 has already executed and what is the time left time left over here after one instant is four so p1 has four time units to be executed and p2 has only one time instant to be executed executed so clearly p2 should be executed next right so we start the execution of p2 again at after one time instant p3 arrives right but p2 completes its work at time instant 2 so there is no decision that we need to make with p2 because p2 just completes so it is uh, it is out of picture now so we are done with this so I'm just putting a cross over here. Now at this time instant 2, we need to make a decision between P1 and P3, right? Because now there are two processes over here in picture. So P3 has a uh, time units of 2 to be uh, executed and P1 has time units left, which is 4, right? Which is four yes so obviously now p3 has a smaller time interval to be executed so we start with p3 over here we execute uh, now after one time instant if i say after one time instant it is very clear that p3 will have only one time unit left and this is going to be reduced right and p1 since it is not executing so it is going to remain same so after we complete p3 only we are going to start with the execution of p1 so once p3 completes after two seconds that will be four over here the p1 executes to complete its remaining work of four seconds and it completes at time instant eight so that's all for this scan chart and now we are going to complete compute the various measures so first of all we have average turnaround time so i would define it again but we have already discussed it in previous sessions but in case you've not seen them i'm just defining it in brief over here you may uh, want to 
view the previous videos you can so uh, first of all if we say about the average turnaround time so it is the sum of the turnaround times of all the processes divided by the total number of processes right now what is the turnaround time of a process the turnaround time of a process is the difference of the time instant at which a process completes at which a process completes minus the time arrive, arrival time of that process for example if i say p1 p1 completes at 8 right and what is its arrival time its arrival time is 0 so its turnaround time would be 8 minus 0 so that is what i've written over here similarly for p2 it would be 2 minus 1 so 2 minus 1 p3 completes at 4 so 4 minus 2 so if we simplify this we get to know that it is 3.67 similarly if we find the average waiting time it is again the sum of the waiting times of all processes divided by the number of processes is, and what is the waiting time? Waiting time is the time difference between the between the if we say the time uh, first of all how do we define it? it? It is defined as the total time for which a process waited in the ready queue. Right. So we would just keep it simple like that and we'll see because the definition basically uh, this definition keeps a uh, remain same throughout but the other things vary like if i say that it is the difference of the time for which first of all it is given the cpu minus the arrival time it would differ right so let's see how it differs let's see what is average waiting time over here first of all we have the gantt chart over here right so if i view the gantt chart we come to know that p1 waited for 4 minus 1 this is the entire thing it waited for P1 was not in picture over here. So 4 minus 1 which is 3 seconds. P1 waited for 3 seconds over here. And since it arrived at 0 instant only. So we do not need to subtract the arrival time from here. So we would say the waiting time over here for P1 is 4 minus 1. Plus for P2. Now let's see for P2. For P2 if I see that I can say that P2 waited for one second right but if I uh, see that its arrival time it is one so the simplest thing is just computes its, compute its waiting time from the Gantt chart and then subtract its arrival time from it so waiting time from Gantt chart is one minus its arrival time one so waiting time for P2 is zero right similarly for P3 waiting time from Gantt chart is two it was not executing over here minus its arrival time 2 we get to know that its waiting time is also 0 so the average waiting time comes out to be 1 which is very much less than the previous we are going to compare the measures at the end and then finally the average response time so the average response time was uh, the sum of the response times of all the processes divided by the number of processes which is 3 in this case and what was the response time the response time was the time instant at which you got the first response from a particular process right so for p1 if i say i uh, see from the Gantt chart I got the response at time instant 0 and its arrival time is also 0 so the response time is 0 then for P2 if we see the response time the first time at which we got the response was 1 minus the arrival time which is 1 so the response time is 0 similarly for P3 it is 2 minus Z, 2 minus its arrival time 2 which is also 0 so the response time over here is 0 plus 0 plus 0 divided by 3 the average response time comes out to be 0 which is a very good measure in this case now if I compare the values with the uh, non preemptive version so what would I see is if I compare the values, uh, the average turnaround time that we got in the previous session was 5.33. In this session, in the uh, preemptive version it is 3.67 the average waiting time was 2.67 over here it is 1 so average response time was 2.67 over here it is 0 so the yes it, what, what we mentioned was the measures would differ and they do differ in the preemptive versions of an algorithm so that's all for the discussion on sh shortest job first over here and we will be continuing with some more algorithms in the next session so stay tuned for more good work coming up thank you